we have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the warehouse. Welcome to Active Shooter, a podcast that covers the whys, the hows, and the aftermath of active shooter and mass casualty events. They have an active shooter in the building. A second call says they uh, are being attacked. I've been shot. <laughs> One six nine ten means we got shots fired. Four fifteen a.m. at the Route to ninety one. Sounded like an automatic firearm. Active shooter, reports of an active shooter, active shooter, active shooter of mass casualty incidents. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Active Shooter, a podcast that may contain adult themes, explicit language, and graphic depictions of violence. Portions of this show may be traumatic for those under 18. Listener discretion is advised. Deadly shooting rampage in Omaha, Nebraska. Eight people gunned down at a shopping mall, at least five others injured. The gunman, only 20 years old, then took his own life. Gunfire erupts inside a crowded shopping mall in Omaha, Nebraska, where a man carrying a rifle went on a deadly shooting rampage at a Von Mauer department store. Witnesses describe hearing dozens of shots fired. On December 5th, 2007, At the West Roads Mall in Omaha, Nebraska, the holiday spirit was in the air. One of the anchor stores of the mall, called Von Mar, was buzzing with excited shoppers working on their Christmas lists, and employees who were going above and beyond to help the customers with picking out gifts and gift wrapping, while Christmas music blared through the store's speaker system. The holiday season was in full swing but would shortly come to an abrupt halt when a 19-year-old young man walked into the Von Mar store and opened fire at 1.36 p.m. Active Shooter the Podcast is a High Five Holly production, and I'm your host, JT. If you've listened to our prior episodes you know that the Active Shooter podcast team has taken the No Notoriety Pledge, and we will not be sharing the real name of the shooters that we cover. We will be giving the shooters a pseudonym and refer to them by that name throughout the episode. This will help in clearing up any confusion in the story while remaining true to our pledge and not naming the shooter by their actual name. We will refer to today's shooter as... Steve. At 1.36 p.m., the shooter entered the store for the first time. He was likely scoping out his crime scene and creating an action plan in his mind. A store security employee commented that the young man looked suspicious and came off as a possible shoplifter. The security worker kept an eye on Steve as he nonchalantly walked around the store for a couple of minutes before exiting the store and returning at 1.43 p.m. Thanks to the store surveillance system, we were able to get an exact timeline of when Steve entered the store and track his route. When he entered the store, he walked straight towards the elevator. He was wearing black pants and a black hooded sweatshirt. His hair was also black, and he had a shaggy black haircut. Steve was carrying a sweatshirt in his arms which we would later find out would be a 39mm semi-automatic rifle. When he entered the elevator, he hit the button that would take him to the third floor of the store. He wasted no time. The second he stepped off the elevator, he opened fire. In addition to the weapon he snuck into the store, he also had two 30-round magazines taped together in his sweatshirt pocket. He walked around the store, stalking his prey, and randomly fired shots at people. Most of his shots were fired around the customer service desk and gift wrapping station. The mall was set up in a way where there was a large opening or atrium in the middle of the mall 
making it possible for Steve to shoot down towards the second floor from the third floor. Victims were found on both the second and third floors. Mall patrons ran for their lives, some screaming, some frozen in fear. I heard 12 gunshots, pop, 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 and people running and screaming. I didn't know what happened. Some people went to the nearby jewelry store to hide. The jewelry store manager quickly figured out what was happening and led a few customers and employees safely to the back room. While others were hiding in dressing rooms, clothing racks, and bathrooms, others were trying to flee towards the closest exit. After Steve had fired over 30 rounds from the semi-automatic rifle, he lifted the rifle and shot himself in the head, near his chin. Steve's body was found near the customer service desk at 2.12 p.m. Police arrived at the scene six minutes after the first 911 call came through to dispatch at 1.42 p.m., making their arrival time 1.48 p.m. The following clip contains the sound of gunshots and may be triggering for some people. If you're not comfortable hearing this audio, please skip forward 13 seconds. 911, what's your emergency? Hello, 911. 911, what's your emergency? There is someone with a gun shooting people in Bob Mar at Westrop. Unfortunately, by the time the police had arrived, the shooting was near over. Every available officer that was on duty was ordered to report to the mall with lights and sirens blaring. Six people were killed instantly at the hands of Steve, while two others would die a short time later. One victim was on their way to the hospital, and another victim died 45 minutes after arriving at the hospital. The shooting lasted from 1.43 p.m. to 1.49 p.m., six minutes of pure torture. Within 30 minutes of the shooting, and after investigators were able to confirm the shooter was indeed dead, Police started evacuating the mall. Police started calmly walking terrified customers either out of the mall or to a safe place in the mall. The police went to each room, closet, and bathroom, ordering scared customers out with their hands in the air. It didn't take long for the media and reporters to hear about what had happened at the West Roads Mall. People were starting to congregate outside of the mall, offering to give rides home to strangers and letting others use cell phones to call loved ones to let them know they were okay. You thought I was somewhat hidden, but I did, uh, you know, peer out, and that's when I saw the the shooter. If the uh, ambulance had gone another block one way or another, or if the paramedics had not worked wonders at the store, I probably would not have made it. God would expect me to make a difference, Uh, no matter how small, in uh, lives to lessen the burden that comes with being angry and being filled with hatred and being filled with uh, vengeance. There was a Jeep Cherokee found isolated in the parking lot that investigators were able to conclude belonged to the shooter. Upon looking through the windows of the vehicle, Investigators were able to see some wires hidden under some clothes. Not knowing what these wires were, the bomb squad was called in to investigate. A bomb robot was used to conclude that the wires were not a bomb and nothing suspicious was found. Active shooter, reports of an active shooter, active shooter, active shooter, mass casualty incidents. Active shooter, reports of an active shooter, active shooter, active shooter of mass casualty incidents. During the chaos, a man, who was down the street from the wall at the time of the shooting, pulled up and asked the officer what was going on. The officer asked the man for identification. While the officer was checking the man's ID, the man received a phone call from his daughter. On the other end of the phone, the daughter was crying hysterically, saying that her brother was the one that committed the shooting. The man that had just handed his identification to the officer was the shooter's father. 
So I'm right there by it, and I pulled up to one cop, and I, I asked this one cop, I said, please just tell me I'm a paranoid father, but I'm just afraid, this, you know, I don't remember how, I just, I just wanted the guy to tell me, just go home, you're being ridiculous. And he asked me for my ID and went away. And he didn't come back. And then my phone rang. And it was my oldest daughter, and all she did was scream into the phone at me. And they still didn't come out and tell me anything. And that's how I found out while I was sitting right at the place. Steve took the lives of eight randomly chosen people at the West Roads Mall, and four were injured due to gunfire. There were two victims treated for injuries not related to gunfire. The victims ranged in age from 24 to 66, and, as stated before, were chosen randomly. Beverly Flynn was a 47-year-old female that was employed by Von Marr. She was a mom to three children and worked as a gift wrapper during the Christmas season. Beverly also worked as a full-time real estate agent at NP Dodge Corporation. She really enjoyed her part-time job at Von Marr. She didn't do it for the money, but thought wrapping gifts for others was fun. The store discount was a nice perk as well. This was Beverly's second holiday season working for Von Marr. She was a very well-respected real estate agent and was known for her loving and kind heart. For each home that she sold, she would plant a rose bush in the new homeowner's yard as a way to say congratulations. Beverly was shot in the chest. Attempts to save her life failed. Janet Jorgensen was a 66-year-old female that was also employed by Von Marr. Janet had three children and eight grandchildren. She worked in the crystal department at Von Marr and really enjoyed her work. Janet worked at the store since it opened 12 years prior. Co-workers and employees loved her and enjoyed her friendly and outgoing spirit and did a lot of charity work. Janet and her husband had celebrated 50 years of marriage before she was tragically taken from this earth. Gary Joy was a 56-year-old male who was also employed by Von Marr. Gary spent his spare time visiting his 91-year-old mother and aunt who lived in a nearby retirement home. He was always going above and beyond to help others. He enjoyed writing poetry and stories and was also pursuing a degree in literature at Bellevue University. While Gary was divorced and had had no children, he did have an older brother. When paramedics arrived at the mall and got to Gary's side, he was still alive. However, Gary died in the ambulance on his way to the hospital. John McDonald was a 65-year-old man who was a customer at Von Marr when he was killed. He was at the mall with his wife shopping and working on checking items off their Christmas list. John was described as being a gentle soul, who really did not like violence and avoided it at all costs. He enjoyed river rafting with his brother on the Salmon River in Idaho, as well as going fishing. The Salmon River was one of his favorite places. John loved music, electronics, and astronomy, and also played the guitar. He tried to hide behind a chair, but died in the store before paramedics were able to get to him. John is survived by his wife of 40 years, two children, and seven wonderful grandchildren. Angie Schuster was a 36-year-old Von Marr employee who was the manager of the girls' department for the Von Moore store. She had worked for the store for about 10 years. Angie's full name was Angela, but always preferred to be called Angie. She was from Dubuque, Iowa, and graduated from the University of Northern Iowa in 1994 with a degree in education. Angie was a devoted sister and aunt. She was described as being very sweet and tender. She and her sister were very close, being only 11 months apart in age, and lived only a mile away from each other. Angie had two nieces and one nephew, who she enjoyed spending every free moment she had with. She also was very deeply in love with her boyfriend of 18 months, and were planning their futures together. Diane Trent was 